Yeah, welcome back. Uh, right now we're going to be talking about what the federal government intends to do. They say there's always been a yearly tax loss of 20 trillion naira, and the federal government has begun reform to end this. And to talk with us, we have Mr. Bolahan Olojede, a public policy analyst here in Lagos State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Olojede. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, nice to be on the program. Okay, now when we talk about losses uh, being incurred by the government, 20 trillion is not a small thing. First of all, what gave rise to these losses, tax losses yearly, to the tune of 20 uh, trillion? Uh, okay, um, in, in our tax system, there is a huge collection inefficiency. Um, uh, a, a lot of people pay what they think is taxes, but these things are actually extortion and not taxes. So it doesn't go to the government, it goes to other pockets. Uh, the other bits include the fact that there are so many agencies of government at various levels that are collecting some of this payment. So um, some of them are absolutely uh, incompetent at what they do. I'll give you a very good example. I remember a friend telling me about how uh, a local government has brought a radio and television license fee to his office for about, I think, a hundred thousand naira. And he was like, "What? What exactly is this supposed to be for?" And then he gave the guy ten thousand naira cash to put in his pocket, and that was the end of that taxation. So, and that happens at various levels, including even the structured. Uh, or what I'll call the uh, official, more, more official collection windows of the government. So a lot of money are being lost every day via all sort of collection corruption and collection inefficiency. So it, it leaps away. The fact that there are multiple ways of collecting, multiple agencies involved, and multiple taxes, there are probably over 60 different taxes at various levels in Nigeria. So when you have such an unstructured tax environment, a lot of the, a lot of the money never gets into government coffers. If you, if you take PE, which is closer to all of us, there are a lot of companies that deduct PE from their staff. They've already deducted it from the staff salary, but they don't give it to government. They just keep it there in their books. So if we structure this uh, uh, taxation better, reduce the number of taxes and the number of agencies that are involved in all this collection, generally improve the collection environment and collection efficiency, we will block most of those leakages and be able to get more taxes for the government, even without increasing tax rate. Because uh, there, there's um, a, a common belief that, oh, the only way those taxes will come up is if we increase tax rate. Tax rates increase is the last on the list of getting more taxation into government coffers. Mm. Okay, so th this, uh, what the federal government is mulling now is that um, uh, in the Punch newspaper, for instance, we have federal government may stop customs, NPA, 61 agencies from collecting trillions in revenue. And uh, we also have that same uh, story on um, daily trust and FIRS set to take over 63 agencies' tax collection mandate. Uh, presidential committee is the one saying that. So, um, are we expecting another alpha beta in the nation? No, uh, alpha beta is a private agency. FR, FRS, on the other hand, <clears throat> is the agency of government charged with tax collection. So, those are two different. Yes. Uh, situation. The reason for the question now, is that does FIRS have the capacity to take all these taxes? It should have. If it doesn't, it can acquire that capacity. It is part of, of the problem in tax collection in Nigeria. Most of those taxes that are collected by all these 1,001 agencies of government, a chunk of those taxes are not going to the right pockets. We need to, to have a proper structure for tax collection. If, apart, apart from the efficiency, there is also the graft. I'm not saying that even FIRS itself 
does not have a lot of work to do when it comes to uh, even graft issues. But you see, it is easier to work out or, or a, a more effective system when you have a centralized agency handling that. If I want to drive technology, for example, uh, for collection, it is easier to do it when I have a single agency that is collecting than when I have to deal with how to uh, uh, make all the various platforms across 1,001 agencies to work together and deliver on the taxation uh, collection of agency that I desire. So that is why making FIRS the chief collector is a better deal. Anybody who has had to deal with some of these other agencies that we are talking about will tell you exactly how inefficient the guys are at collecting those taxes. And the level, if, if, if you're even talking of custom duties, for example, the kind of things that are going on with custom duties are, 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 are unbelievable in terms of craft. Hmm. You know, so I think that it's a more streamlined approach. I think it makes it easier for deployment of technology. It makes it easier for us to give it a focus. It makes it easier to streamline the 60 taxes or more that we have into a single window, match some of these things so that a, a business owner, for example, does not have to be accountable to so many different uh, uh, agencies of government when it comes to the taxes that he has to pay. In fact, there are certain taxes. Look at the, um, the taxes for if your building is close to the ocean or to the sea in, in Lagos State. So Lagos State will ask you that the waterway uh, uh, tax. And then federal government again will come and ask you for the same taxation. And Lagos State will tell you that it is different. The own waterway agency is different from the federal government waterway agency. So these are the kind of situation we must streamline to reduce the burden of multiple taxation uh, 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 and improve collection efficiency for taxes in Nigeria. Mm. Okay, you did mention something that we need a, a good ta uh, tax collection structure. What would you describe as a good tax collection structure? It is that which does not leave tax, too much taxes on the table uncollected. What we have right now, I have a favorite example of talking about uh, taxes. Uh, if you take personal income taxes in the United States, the top 1% earners, top 1%, contribute approximately 40% of the personal income taxes in, in, in the U.S. In Nigeria, it is almost the opposite. The top earners, a lot of them don't pay anything. And a lot of them will pay as if they are fresh graduates just hired as a teller in the bank. That's the kind of tax. When you go and check the kind of taxes that some people are presidential candidates paid, when you go and look at the form they filled and see the taxes they paid over the last three years, you will be embarrassed. So a lot of top earners in Nigeria are not even paying the, the, the taxes. Whereas those top earners contribute 40%, like I said, of personal income taxes in a jurisdiction like the United States. So it is important that the collection efficiency improves significantly. Otherwise, we will keep on chasing only a segment of the market. And those are the only people that will continue to carry the unfair burden of taxation in Nigeria. They are the people, if you talk about personal income taxes, they are the people in that salary bracket because their taxes are deducted before you give them the net. So those people carry a lot of weight. But the income of a politician or some other business people who are not in a structured kind of business, how do they, how do you, how much of their taxes do we actually collect? I remember the last um, uh, head of uh, FIRS told us how many uh, Nigerians are paying up to, uh, I can't remember what it would be, 10 million taxes in Nigeria. And they found out that in many states, no, there are many states where nobody is paying that level of taxes. In fact, Lagos State considers the highest number of people contributing to that level of taxes. 
And it is not as if there are no billionaires in all these other states. The question is, where are their taxes? Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, another issue is, um, I asked the question, if FIRS has the capacity, you said even though they don't have the capacity, they can have the capacity. How do you think they yes. should do this? Because, I, I don't know, do you propose that they recruit people that will be able to do this, or they co-opt some other agencies which will bring us to almost the same place that we are right now, having multiple agencies working and all that. What is the best way to go for them to uh, acquire the capacity that they need to drive this process? Okay, as far as, as uh, uh, the technical staff, uh, I, 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 I'm a member of the Institute of Data Taxation of Nigeria myself. Uh, by virtue of certain finance throw that are occupied, I've had to deal with the tax office. They have competent technical people who understand taxation. You are not likely to find a, a collection of that number of technical people in any other collecting agency. In fact, in some of the collecting agencies, the, the, the knowledge of taxes is, is, is minimal. And these people are still responsible for collecting taxes. So what we need to do with FRS is level the capacity. So maybe uh, they have uh, 10 people working in the station, and we need to make them to be 12 or 13. Let's do that. But most of the work are actually going to be driven by technology, not even human. So you have the human beings with the uh, right level of technical competence addressing issues that require human intervention, and you have technology driving all those parts of our, of our collection that do not require human intervention. So this, this is the way it's, it's, going, it's going to run. Definitely, uh, by the time FRS takes over, uh, more responsibility into equal resources. And the resources are here. It, Uh, we seem to be having problems with the audio of uh, Bola. Why are them? Okay. What you know it is capacity essentially that I'm not Go on, please. Okay. Um, well, let me just ask you a final question. We seem to be having some uh, audio problems. We do, we do hope that uh, it will correct itself. Let me ask you this, uh, Bola. Um, will the exchange rate in any way affects uh, this um, move by the federal government to uh, whatever they're trying to do in the tax collection. Will the exchange uh, rate affect it in any way? Right now, a dollar is selling for 917 naira in some places, and in other places like Lagos, maybe 850 or something. So. Do you think this reform that the federal government is trying to put into tax collection will be affected by this uh, uh, dollar rate? Uh, not, not in the short term. Um, uh, not, maybe not even in the medium term. Here is what happened. In the short term, there is no direct effect of how you collect your internal taxation and the foreign exchange uh, rate. However, where it's being packed is that if your collection efficiency of taxation improves and you're able to collect more at a lower cost, then you have more pool of fund to spend as government. So government can be able to deploy uh, more fund to issues around production. So you create infrastructure, it makes production and businesses to do well. Um, you are able to invest, say, in power, it will help production. And the more we start to produce and have more products to offer the world, the more we are in charge of the stability of our currency. But as of today, where we live in the country, um, the, the other time I, I, I heard uh, people advocating that government should lift ban on the items on the for, for the three items on the ban list for foreign exchange uh, assessment through the CBM window. But when I look on the list of that for the three items, there is two to pick there. So which means 
Uh, we are still a country that think that we should be importing toothpick, I, I, and I, I can't, I can't understand that. So the, the, the only way it will impact is that if we're able to use the money, deploy the money that we're going to make from taxation to make it a right environment for businesses to thrive, to create a infrastructure that will enable production, so that Nigeria will reduce dependence on importation on one side, and at the same time be able to produce and export, even if it is within Africa, and end foreign exchange. When our foreign exchange earn is move away from being 90% dependent on crude oil, we will improve our capacity to stabilize the Naira. But there are, in the immediate, there is no direct correlation between collection of the internal taxes and the foreign Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Bolahon Olojede, for coming on the program today and helping us make sense of what is happening and right now. The reform, we do hope every policy that has come uh, will, will give us um, uh, the air to breathe because that's the reigning thing now. Let the people breathe. And um, we thank you so much for your time this morning. Yeah, the pleasure is Thanks for having me. Okay. That was Bolahon Oloje Day, a public policy analyst uh, talking to us from Lagos State here. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at how adoption of technology can help businesses in Nigeria to navigate in times of inflation. Stay with us.